Rich the Kid's record label, Rich Forever, is dead. Just going over to his website, richforevermusic.com, which was once active, hosting the new songs for his career and his record label, you can find it to be defunct. But this label at one point in time, if you ask young people who listen to rap, what was one of the best rapper-run record labels, and they would have told you Rich Forever. Rich the Kid started his own rap career in the Atlanta scene, releasing his first solo mixtape, Been About Benjamins, in 2013, with features from the likes of the Migos and Rich Homie Quan. He would grow to popularity alongside the Migos, who were blowing up at the time from Versace, and he would be on collaborative mixtapes with the Migos for the next couple of years. Streets on Lock 1, Streets on Lock 2, 3, and 4 are fully packed with Rich the Kid verses throughout the project. It wasn't just a couple of features. He would still release his own projects during this time, but didn't have his own strong fan base and was somewhat seen as Amigo's sidekick or cheerleader while they were the real stars, which is why post-2015, Rich the Kid wanted to establish his own brand, identity, and fan base as a solo rapper and shake off the stigma of being popular because of the Migos. Rich the Kid, before signing a record deal for his own career, decided to leverage his buzz in early 2016 to start his own record label, Rich Forever Music, and the first artist he would sign was a Chicago rapper who had his own unique style coming out of that city and making noise with his own mixtapes, music videos, sound, and look. That was Famous Dex. In April of 2016, Rich the Kid would sign his second rapper, Jay Stash, who had a decent level of popularity the prior two years, mostly known for visiting Japan frequently and collaborating with Japanese rapper Ko, and known within the young New York City fashion slash hip hop scene of Ian Connor spawns on Instagram and Twitter that was going on between 2013 and 2015. Rich the Kid wouldn't waste time. He would release the first Rich Forever mixtape in March of 2016 with his whole roster at the time, which was just Jay Stash and Famous Dex, but features in a couple of songs from the Quality Control crew of Offset, Migos, OG Mako, Lil Yachty, and Skip It a Flippa. This had a decent buzz, but wouldn't go too crazy because Rich the Kid had not yet fully blown up, but that was soon to come. Only a couple of weeks later, Rich the Kid would release the mixtape that really put him on the map and solidified his solo career in April of 2016, and that was Trap Talk. This mixtape had features from Kodak Black, Playboy Cardi, 21 Savage, Ty Dolla Sign, and of course the Migos, but the standout song from this was Plug. That was accompanied by a music video on World Star Hip Hop and seen as one of the SoundCloud era classics. In June of that same year, Rich the Kid would sign his record label Rich Forever Music to 300 Entertainment and follow it up with the release of the mixtape Rich Forever 2. Jay Stash having been dropped from the team, it was just the duo Rich the Kid and Famous Dex now. This mixtape was received well. It got a lot of talk and had features that blended well with the sound thanks to features from Wiz Khalifa, Lil Yachty, Young Thug, Jaden Smith, Playboy Cardi, and even Lil Uzi Vert on the song Bust Down. In November of 2016, Rich the Kid would welcome relatively unknown rapper Jay Critch of New York City as the next signee to the Rich Forever label. Jay Critch had a song that was doing decent online with an accompanying music video, Did It Again. Rich the Kid would remix this song and sign him to his record label. This worked perfectly. Jay Critch had his own unique style and flow that was different to any other New York rapper at the time, and lent itself perfectly to SoundCloud rap fans, which was the composition of Rich the Kid's record label. They would release the mixtape Rich Forever Way in March of 2017, where the only non-Rich Forever feature on this project, which was a relatively short EP of only seven songs, was Made in Tokyo. This mixtape would spawn multiple SoundCloud hits, with the song In My Coop being streamed 21 million times on SoundCloud, and of course, Rich Forever intro with the full roster and music video on World Star Hip Hop that's sitting at over 23 million views. This EP was really just a teaser and promotion for their upcoming mixtape, Rich Forever 3, and you could hear Rich the Kid rap Rich Forever 3 on the way in some songs on that EP. Then only several months later, they would officially release Rich Forever 3 on June 16, 2017. 
The project was 11 tracks with no features outside the roster of Jay Critch, Rich the Kid, and Famous Dex. Rich the Kid would also sign to a major record label as a solo rapper that month. I was talking to different labels, Columbia, RCA, Epic. I decided not to sign with Epic even after L.A. Reid offered me a crazy deal. Manny Smith and Interscope CEO John Janik understand me and my vision for myself and also my label. Interscope gave me the opportunity to take over the game completely, and that's what I'm going to do. This was arguably reaching, or if not reaching, pretty much near the peak of Rich Forever. And it's hard to quite describe how amazing this time was. Both this mixtape and the preceding EP Rich Forever Way were the perfect SoundCloud record label or crew projects. It was three rappers who had their own style respectively, yet still were SoundCloud with both the sound, beats, and fashion. However, they decided to ditch the regular method of maybe recording a song with someone just doing a hook, Jay Critch on a verse, and Rich the Kid on a verse. Let me explain. In the song In My Coop, they would share both the hook and the verses. Famous Dex had the first four lines of the chorus. Then Jay Critch came in with his four, followed by Rich the Kid, and they would be rapping about the same topic as well. This was true, undeniable, genuine chemistry between these guys. You couldn't fake it. And nobody else had it other than perhaps the Migos who were genuinely family, raised together, and had been rapping for what, seven plus years together at that point? These three had less than a year. When I was listening to these tracks, I could really feel the energy. You can imagine they're all just vibing together in the studio like it's a freestyle session with the homies or a cypher. Rich the Kid drops a couple of bars, then Famous Dex says, hold up, I got it from here, then proceeds to tag in Jay Critch. It was magical, to say the least. During this time, Famous Dex and Jay Critch were both releasing their own singles and building up their solo careers, but the only projects that were released in 2017 by any of these guys were the group mixtapes. Everything was working smoothly, and we have to give Rich the Kid credit here because he didn't build a record label like any other rapper. He hadn't even had his first solo hit single yet or his debut album. He built this from the ground up. Sure, he had a buzz and connections within the industry, that's for sure, but these guys all grew together as a unit. A lot of people were just Rich Forever fans. Famous Dex was arguably bigger than Rich the Kid when he got signed, However, things would change a couple of months after the release of Rich Forever 3. Rich the Kid had secured a feature from arguably the biggest rapper in the game, as one of the only two rap features Kendrick Lamar appeared on that year, New Freezer. This was a shock to everyone. They were two completely different rappers with different styles, and nobody expected them to come together. But it worked. And apparently, ASAP Ferg was also supposed to be on the track, But Kendrick Lamar said he would only do it if he was the sole feature. And it became a hit that would help everyone on the roster. The song released in September of 2017 and would even get a music video in October that featured Kendrick Lamar. All solo careers were booming right now. The same month that New Freezer released, Famous Dex released the song Pick It Up with ASAP Rocky that turned into a hit song, his biggest yet at the time. 2018, though, would be the most successful year ever for all members of Rich Forever, but unfortunately, the beginning of the end. In February of 2018, Rich the Kid would release his biggest and most successful song ever, Plug Walk. It would premiere on Zane Lowe's radio show and was an instant hit. It would get its own music video that was inspired by Breaking Bad the next month and would peak at number 13 on the Hot 100 charts. He would also sign YBN Almighty J to his record label, or at least he claimed he did. He would release a song with them titled Beware in February, then a month later a song titled Back Too Quick in March of 2018. But this upset YBN Almighty J for some reason or something else upset him, and they got into this beef that people thought was fake but was apparently real. These niggas is hoes. Niggas give me an address to a mom. Look at that. Nigga send me address to a shopping mall. Man, this nigga's a hoe. This lame ass nigga, man. Man, this nigga rich is a hoe. He's scared. He don't want to fight, bro. Scary ass nigga, bro. Don't, don't ever play with me, nigga. Don't ever play with me like you talk, bro. You, you was a bitch. You 
not tough, nigga. Don't ever play with me, nigga. Don't ever disrespect me, nigga. This was interesting because Almighty J had stolen Rich the Kid's entire flow, word for word, bar for bar, but was apparently also dating Black China, who was possibly linked to Rich the Kid at one point. Either way, Almighty J would be off Rich Forever soon after and claim he was never signed. That same month, though, Famous Dex would release the music video to his biggest hit ever, Japan, peaking at number 28 on the Billboard Hot 100 charts. Rich the Kid would release his debut album, The World Is Yours, on March 30th, selling 59k first week and debuting at number 2 on the charts in a solid project. Rich Forever's stock was going crazy at this point. Multiple hits by two artists, a successful album rollout, and now a beef with another major rapper that was kind of in favor of Rich the Kid at this time. Remember how Lil Uzi Vert was featured on Rich Forever 2? That was an interesting feature back in 2016 because Lil Uzi Vert was still taken off during that year, and Rich the Kid had attempted to sign him to Rich Forever that would later be revealed in their beef that kicked off in January of 2018 when Lil Uzi Vert was having record label issues. Uzi would tweet out, and if y'all do sign, sign to a major, don't sign to a rapper or a DJ, it's just easier when the time comes for that fake stuff. To which Rich the Kid replied, unannounced, that's why you should have signed Rich Forever. To which Uzi replied, boy I'm not signing for no 20 racks. Lil Uzi Vert wasn't being disrespectful, didn't name any names initially, but Rich the Kid inserted himself into this and would follow up a response inviting people to sign to Rich Forever music. Hey man, your boss ain't treating you right, your CEO ain't treating you right, man, come over to Rich Forever Music, you know what I'm saying, come over to Rich Forever Music. Lil Uzi Vert would respond holding up a crab and tagging Rich the Kid. This would lead up to a song and music video that was on Rich the Kid's album titled Dead Friends, where he takes shots at Uzi. Things didn't look too good for Rich the Kid's image though when Lil Uzi Vert ran up on him in Philly and he decided to run and hide over a Starbucks counter. While Rich the Kid wasn't a gangster rapper, this hurt his image. After all, he started this beef in the public. Things started to get shaky around March of 2018 when Famous Dex claimed he was off Rich Forever. This was hurting the Rich Forever image because Rich the Kid was trying to roll out Rich Forever 4 that he had been teasing for a while. Rich the Kid would say that Famous Dex was just upset his album wasn't being rolled out like he expected it to, but he was definitely still under paperwork. Famous Dex album Dex Meets Dexter would release on April 6, 2018 to sales of 25k in the first week. Jay Critch throughout 2018 wouldn't have any smash hits like his other label mates. To be clear as well, Jay Critch was signed to Rich Forever but distributed through Interscope Records, while Famous Dex was signed to Rich Forever but through 300 Entertainment. Jay Critch would have big underground songs though like his track A Thousand Ways with Harry Fraud, his track Ego, and leading up to his debut mixtape slash album Hood Favorite. That was rather lackluster in comparison to all the singles he released in the lead up to it and appearances on Rich Forever tapes. Fans were beginning to feel a rift throughout 2018. The guys weren't around each other very often. It could have been their solo careers doing well and that kind of takes you and drifts apart a little bit. But the vibe wasn't the same. Music wasn't being produced like it once was. And when Rich Forever 4 released in April of 2019... It felt like satisfying a commercial release by putting together a bunch of old songs on an album to make money. Everyone knew things weren't the same. Other than this project in 2019, Rich the Kid would still appear on songs with Jay Critch or Famous Dex, but this was the unofficial death of Rich Forever music. Famous Dex would never recover, going through multiple legal issues from domestic violence, alleged robbery of a watch he was borrowing, in and out of jail, running away from police, etc. Jay Critch wouldn't get into any trouble really other than a group of people jumping him in New Jersey for no apparent reason other than maybe wanting to rob him. But he just phased out slowly over time and never really got to hit the mainstream like Famous Dex or Rich the Kid did. Then 2020 hit with everything locked down, so all three of these guys took a big hit. Although Rich the Kid and Famous Dex had a song with Tyga that streamed decently called What I Like. Other than that, Rich the Kid didn't have Jay Critch or Famous Dex featured on any of his songs that year or 2022. In January of 2021, Jay Critch would go off on Rich the Kid in his Instagram story saying, I am not rich forever. That's been a dub. 
Stop letting these niggas cap about owning masters and stuff. They trying to hold niggas in bum ass deals. They be your brother until the business come up. Then it's all this lawyer talk, contract talk. Rich the Kid would respond, I signed Jay when I had a two bedroom apartment. I flew him out when I had 5k to my name and signed him. Off the strength of Grams, who you didn't do right with either. I gave a platform and made him who he is today. I got him a new deal to get out of this BS, which your lawyer ain't take no part in. Then he tried to snake to me, go behind my back for a little bag, Rich the Kid continued. You say you want out of a contract you signed, and I haven't made zero dollars off of you. Stop making it seem like you can just say, oh, I'm not in a contract no more. I put you on tour with Future your first year of being signed. I put you on and you have no loyalty. This was a sad sight for fans to witness. Jay Critch had pretty much fallen off the map by 2021. Rich the Kid himself was barely hanging on a thread. And Famous Dex had much bigger problems than his music career. But these guys were once inseparable. Rich the Kid would mend the relationship though a month later, saying in an interview with Zane Lowe, So I feel like when it comes to business, you really need to just keep it in-house. But sometimes when your emotions get mixed up into the business, that's when stuff goes bad. That's what I'm really learning as I grow up. And being a better boss and better person to just, yeah, we've been friends forever, so definitely, we've spoke on the phone, I talked to him yesterday. This was an interesting admission because Rich the Kid had aired out 300 Entertainment publicly before. Yo! 300 ENT, y'all suck. Listen, y'all gotta let me out this damn contract. I don't wanna be with y'all no more, I told y'all. I give y'all then this money back. I don't want to be with y'all label no more. Y'all suck. Y'all is trash. And then being called a clown by the label owner in an interview. Well, about that, I don't about feel. I don't. I don't feel good about um, hearing that. But it, it sounds like he's a clown. Maybe it's a late night something. Um, you know. Here's the thing. I give money early. I sign a contract early. Right. Mm -hmm. That's what, what about a contract money doesn't mean anything these days. It showed maturity on growth on Rich the Kid's part, but Jay Critch eventually being let off the record label and independent now. But they would collaborate together as soon as April of 2021, appearing on a track with Skillabang titled Real Boss. Famous Dex is still signed to Rich Forever and 300 Entertainment, and he hasn't released an official streaming service song for over two years since his song cooped out with Fabio Foreign in August of 2020. But Jay Critch has had an independent release with Rich the Kid titled Lefty that has over 1.5 million streams just this year. Rich the Kid has maintained a personal relationship and even willing to work with Jay Critch. And he's also been seeing helping famous decks, whether it's helping him get into rehab, picking him up or other things. So he hasn't forgotten about them. But that doesn't mean Rich Forever isn't dead. Rich the Kid has had his own career problems and is trying to make a comeback with a new record deal, but that's a topic for another video.